All right, we're back out here working on the tractor. Truck's outside, looking good. It's like 60 degrees today. <clears throat> so, uh, as you remember yesterday, these are the welds, keeping the three sections of the frame together. And I figured I'd just hit them again. So I put one there and I put one on the bottom there to cover up all those little tacks and just to kind of suck everything together. Um, I also welded that joint and now I'm gonna turn my attention to this area. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is fill it and then grind it and make it look all like one piece. This guy I'm gonna have to cut this little tab off because it's in the way. Um, and then I might clean these up and hit them again while I'm here. So, fun, fun. All right, well, there's the top side. And uh, it's not really even gonna require that much grinding. Obviously I'm gonna grind it, but now I'm gonna turn my attention to that area. All right, well now the bottom one's filled. I did a little bit of grinding. It really didn't need that much. And uh, so is the top one. So now we're gonna hit everything with a little bit of paint just to keep it from rusting. All right, so I got the trainee apart. I cleaned up the gasket surface and uh, I'm gonna put some Permatex Ultra Blue 77B on there. That's what we're gonna use. All right, so uh, we've kind of hit a pause time, whatever you wanna call, on the frame because the next thing that's gotta happen is the trainee's gotta go back in. But before the trainee goes back in, I wanted to reseal a couple parts of it. So this is actually the pump and motor, and then this is just the axle, and they join on this plate. So it had been leaking before, the gasket looked really shitty, so clean it all up, clean this all up. Um, I'm using blue RTV, smeared it around, and then put a bead around it. Some people are probably gonna give me shit for this. This is the way I've always done it, it seems to work. Uh, I've done oil pans on Onans like that before, so we're gonna give that another minute or two, and then we're gonna slap it back together. And then we're gonna have to give that 24 hours to set up, so I won't be able to do anything more with that until tomorrow. But while I was out, I picked up a couple fittings from Fluid Dynamics. This is for the suction hose on the bottom of the training, um, which is that port there. And if we're looking at it like this, the hose goes like this up into the up into the pump, and because it has such a wide arc, it interferes with being able to use the rear motor deck mount, which does two things. One, it's a loader m mounting point. However, I don't know how much that's gonna help us given that the frame stretched, but whatever. More importantly, it's a, uh, a structural item. And now that I look at it, these tranny mounts, let's see, yeah, these tranny mounts occupy that rear hole, but I could probably modify it to make it work anyway. It's just a handy thing to have because, after all, we're looking for frame reinforcement. So, anyway, enough talk. Um, I'm going to get going on this training. Well, disaster struck. I don't know if you all remember or not. I don't know if it was documented in a video. Last time we were going to put this thing together, I stripped out a power steering port on the power steering box. And being that it's not a serviceable item, had to buy a whole new box. Well, this time, it's similar, except it's a tranny. So I just regasketed it, the, or applied the silicone, whatever, and we were going to tighten it to let it set up. And stupid me, there's supposed to be sleeves here that support these castings. Well, this is what happens when you forget those sleeves. That's cracked. That's cracked. So, gotta buy a new hydro pump. I can still use the old axle, but I gotta buy a new hydro pump for it. Which isn't the worst thing in the world, because these were leaking anyway. But, it's always something. So, we gotta get that ordered up. <clears throat>
couple days later and focus we got ourselves a new pump and motor and look at that it ain't even broken guess we got to throw around tomorrow all right well this is now the third day that I have filmed a video as part of this video, which you are now watching. And uh, basically the timeline is uh, today's Wednesday. Uh, Saturday, last Saturday we got the new pump. Last Thursday we broke the old pump. So Thursday, Saturday, now Wednesday. So it's been about a week. I'll show you what's going on. So here's the old pump. There's the brakes, and uh, I can't remember if I said it in the other video, but basically what happened is there's sleeves, which are right there, that go between the pump and the tranny, and I put them in, I put the tranny on the axle with no sleeves, and they're cast, so they broke. So we went out and got this one, and then we had to put it in the frame. So there's those really nice brackets that we made up and welded in and everything like that. Now the problem is that putting the tranny in the frame with those uh, mounts being hard mounted, like welded, like they're not moving, is very difficult. And in the process of doing that, the pump moved on the axle and as you can see by all the speedy dry, leaked. So, we're now going to start over and we're going to cut those out and we're going to make bolt-in brackets, which we should have done in the first place. And that way installing and removing the transmission is a lot easier and we can reseal it properly. So the next step is the training's got to come back out and we're going to cut those brackets out, make bolt-in brackets. At the same time, we're going to grind the schmeg off the axle and then also Kind of difficult to tell if I can measure it real quick, but because of the lack of mounts or just the lack of good mounts, the axle never sat center in the frame. So to give you an idea, let's see how we can do this. Okay, so from the inside of the tire roughly to the outside of the frame roughly, is like four, uh, not quite four and a half. And over here, it's like four and a quarter. So this tire is also deflated, so it's sitting shorter, so it's closing that gap. So really there's like a three quarter inch difference between it being centered and not, which you really don't see it until the fenders are on it and everything, and then it's pretty obvious that one side sticks out farther than the others. So that's kind of frustrating because you put all this time and money and stuff into it and then it doesn't come out square. So it's just a design flaw, it's nothing else. So that's where we're at. Uh, and uh, that's just about it for now. So we probably won't be doing anything on this until Sunday. We have, today's March 1st, so we have 45 days exactly to get this ready. So, I don't see an issue with us getting it done. It's just, we gotta keep working and not stop.